In this video, we'll explore the captivating and intricate world of ocular structures with the anatomy of the eye. Our presentation will provide a comprehensive overview, illuminating the various components of the eye. We'll kick off with an enlightening introduction, following that, we will describe the general structure of the eye. Then, we'll conclude with key takeaways. The human eye operates in a way strikingly similar to a camera. This similarity lies in the coordinated work of its different parts to create the images we see. Firstly, at the forefront, we have the cornea and the lens, which together form the eye's focusing apparatus. This mechanism is analogous to a camera's lens, adjusting to focus light onto the retina. Next, the role of the iris is likened to that of a camera's diaphragm. The iris adjusts the size of the pupil, controlling the amount of light that enters the eye, much like how a camera's diaphragm controls light exposure. At the back of the eye lies the retina. The function of the retina is compared to that of camera film or a digital sensor. It captures the focused light through a layer of photoreceptor cells. These cells convert light into electrical signals, which are then processed by the brain to create visual images. For a normal emetropic eye, which means an eye with perfect vision without the need for corrective lenses, the dimensions are as follows, the sagittal, or anterior-posterior, diameter measures approximately 24 mm. The horizontal diameter, representing the width of the eye, is about 23.5 mm. The vertical diameter, or the height of the eye, is roughly 23 mm. The eye's weight is approximately 7 grams, highlighting its lightness. The volume of the eye is around 6.5 cubic centimeters, demonstrating the compact and efficient nature of its design. These measurements reflect the eye's delicate balance between size and functionality, underlining its complexity and precision as an organ. Before we delve into the general structure of the eyeball, it's important to understand some key clinical correlations related to refractive conditions. This diagram provides a clear visual representation of normal vision and common refractive errors, along with their optical corrections. In the normal eye, depicted in the top left, light rays are precisely focused on the retina, which enables clear vision. However, in myopia, or short-sightedness, shown in the middle left diagram, the eye's sagittal diameter is longer than normal, causing light to converge in front of the retina. This results in blurred distant vision. The correction for myopia involves using a concave lens, as illustrated in the top right, which diverges the light rays so they can properly focus on the retina. Conversely, hypermetropia, or long-sightedness, occurs when the sagittal diameter is shorter, illustrated in the bottom left diagram. Here, the light would converge behind the retina if it continued, which blurs near vision. The correction for hypermetropia is shown in the bottom right, where a convex lens converges the light rays earlier, allowing for a clear focus on the retina. Now let's delve into the details of the eye's general structure. The eyeball is positioned in the anterior part of the orbital cavity, enveloped by a fascial sheath that delineates it from the surrounding orbital muscles and fatty tissue, ensuring stable placement and movement. The structure of the eyeball comprises three concentric layers that form its spherical structure, each enclosing a cavity, the outermost layer, or fibrous coat, includes the sclera and the cornea. The sclera, known for its toughness, forms the white of the eye and offers protection and structural integrity. The cornea, clear and convex, serves as the eye's primary light-focusing element. The middle layer, or vascular coat, is also referred to as the uveal tract. This includes the choroid, ciliary body, and iris. The choroid lies between the retina and the sclera, rich in blood vessels, providing oxygen and nutrients to the eye. The ciliary body, adjacent to the lens, contains the muscles that adjust the lens's shape for focusing, while the iris, the colored part of the eye, contains the pupil and functions to regulate the amount of light that enters. The innermost layer is the nervous coat, or the retina. This layer houses photoreceptor cells that are sensitive to light and is responsible for converting light into electrical signals. These signals are then relayed to the brain via the optic nerve, culminating in visual perception. Before we conclude, let's detail the anterior and posterior segments of the eye, along with their integral components. The anterior segment encompasses the structures at the front of the eye, up to the lens. It begins with the cornea, the clear front surface of the eye. Just behind the cornea lies the anterior chamber, a space containing the aqueous humor. At the iris and cornea junction is the iridocorneal angle. 
The iris, notable for its color, encircles the pupil. The choroid, a vascular layer that supplies blood, especially to the outer portions of the retina. The posterior chamber, situated between the iris and the lens, is yet another space filled with aqueous humor. The lens itself is a transparent, biconvex entity. Behind the lens is the posterior segment, containing the vitreous body, a gel-like substance that fills the large space at the back of the eye. The retina, the light-sensitive tissue layer, captures visual information. The choroid, continuing posteriorly, supports the retina, and the sclera, the eye's external protective layer, maintains its shape. Each part of the eye's structure is vital for its function, and disruptions to these components can lead to visual impairment. To summarize, the organ of vision encompasses all structures involved in the reception and transmission of visual impulses. Located within the orbit, a bony cavity that offers protection and support, it consists of the following components, the main organ, this includes the eye itself and the optic nerve. The eye captures light and translates it into electrical signals, while the optic nerve transmits these signals for visual processing. Additionally, there are visual accessory organs, fundamental to the eye's optimal functioning, these include, o the ocular muscles and bulbar fascia, responsible for moving the eyeball, allowing it to rotate in various directions for a broader field of vision. The bulbar fascia, or the fascial sheath of the eyeball, provides a supportive casing, aiding in the eyeball's movement and maintaining its position in the orbit. O the orbital fat body, this acts as a cushion around the eyeball, absorbing shocks and ensuring the eye is snugly fit within the orbital cavity, thus aiding in its protection and proper functioning. O the conjunctiva, a delicate membrane lining the inner surface of the eyelids and extending over the sclera. It keeps the front surface of the eye moist and lubricated, facilitating smooth eye movement and protecting against foreign particles. O the lacrimal apparatus, comprising the lacrimal glands and associated ducts, it is essential for producing and draining tears. O and the eyelids, they act as protective covers for the eye, shielding it from external irritants and injury. Each component plays a unique and indispensable role in the process of vision, working in concert to enable us to perceive and interact with our surroundings effectively. The process of seeing begins when light waves enter the front of the eye. Brightness and distinct colors are first interpreted by structures in the back of the eye, and then sent as stimulus signals that the brain interprets as vision. On the exterior of the eye is an area called the cornea that includes a pupil, a hole through which light enters the eye. Inside the eye, light is refracted by a lens and focused onto the retina, a layer of receptors that lines the inside of the eye. The retina includes two types of nervous system cells, cones that interpret color of light waves and rods that interpret the intensity of light. These photoreceptors process information into nerve signals that travel through the optic nerve into the occipital lobe of the brain where signals are interpreted to represent an image.